Hi folks, it's Diane from Spencer Rog Sewing Patterns and today I'd like to let you into a little secret which is hump jumpers. Now I have to admit that this time last year I'd never even heard of a hump jumper. I have used something similar that um, I've made myself, folded up pieces of cardboard, uh, even a pair of scissors at one point, um, but this is brilliant, it's revolutionised my sewing. Um, I have to admit that I have received them in parcels with new sewing machines before now and thrown them away because I just thought they were part of the packaging. Um, it's a really useful piece of kit to have in your bag making armoury and I'd like to show you how to use it. So this is our hump jumper. What it is, is a sewing aid to help us to sew from a thin layer to a thick layer or vice versa without getting any slip stitches or skip stitches or even those tiny little annoying stitches that we often get. Now in bag making we're forever sewing from thin to thick layers and we all know the feeling when you're stitching around the top of a bag and at the very end we're just approaching the straps or oh, the stress of thinking we're just about to ruin all of our hard work. So the hump jumper is going to overcome, overcome that for us. I'm going to illustrate with a strap in this instance. The hump jumper has a thin side and a thick side and what we want to do is we want to match the depth of that strap with a similar depth of the hump jumper. So in this case I'm going to use, this is a little bit big, I'm going to use the narrower side. So what I'm going to do is, where's the press of foot? I'm going to start stitching along here on our single layer of fabric, happily, happily, and what we see is it st starts to raise the presser foot at this side as we're hitting the strap. So the further you go along, the more of a diagonal that's going to create with your foot, and what happens is the foot loses contact with the feed dogs. And, and that's when we get our slip stitches and small stitches because there's no control left. So as we approach that strap, we want to lift the foot, insert our thinner side underneath it, and butt it up right against that strap. Lower the presser foot again. And you'll see that what we've done is we've made the foot horizontal again. So we're back in control again. So carry on stitching, stitch along your strap. And you'll see everything's lovely and horizontal. As we're getting to the end, it will do exactly the same, but it will start to angle down. So you're going to lose control again with your feed dogs. So um, we're going to press the presser foot, remove from that side. You, you can probably just stitch over it. And before we get to the end of that strap, we're going to insert it again at the front this time. Um, you'll see that it's kind of two prongs with a gap in the middle. So it means we can actually carry on sewing, even though this is under the presser foot. So let's butt it up there against the strap. We're rested on the prongs there, we're horizontal again. So carry on stitching until you're off the strap. So go a little further along, don't just take it out straight away. You can if you need to, if it's not quite off, I think this is probably all right, but you can scoot it forward a little bit and carry on. You probably see there, it's still a little bit uh, diagonal. So I'm gonna push that in for another couple of stitches, just while it gets off the end there and then remove, put down again, all flat, carry on stitching. So there we have a perfectly stitched seam, even though you've gone over a huge hump of about eight layers. Um, you can use the hump jumper for straps, corners, thick pockets, virtually anything where you've got a hump. Um, I hope you found this tutorial helpful and you'll join me again for more in the future.